the label of this has changed. It's no longer just doing the product of powers. We are doing powers, so meaning like something raised to an exponent, of a monomial. So if this is a monomial, then I'd be raising this to a new power. So we're raising a power to a power. So it's like this inside of the parentheses has x squared, and I'm going to cube that. So let's write this one off to the side, just like we did the other ones. So let's think of x squared to the power of 3. So that means that whatever the heck I have inside of this container is being multiplied by itself three times. So that means that this is x squared times x squared times x squared. So it's like I have two occurring three total times. So I could just call that x to the sixth. So down here, I don't want to have to show all that work, so I'm just going to label this as x to the sixth. But as this is a new concept for you, you might want to write it all out. Now if you're running tight on space, we're going to do this again uh, for the second example on the right side where it says y cubed to the power of 4. So maybe that means you have to like draw an arrow or whatever, but you can figure it out. Just fit it in. I don't want it showing up here because I want it to be clear that this is separate from our main work. So y cubed, find some room for this, to the power of 4. Well, whatever is inside of this parentheses is being multiplied by itself four total times. So here's y cubed y cubed, y cubed, y cubed. So it's being raised to the power of 3, and then that is happening not once, not twice, not three, but four times. And 3 times 4 is the easiest way to do this. It's going to be y to the 12th power. Now, I've explained that quite a bit now. Let's see if we can pause ourselves for a moment. I'm not saying pause the video. We're going to double check this, okay? I'm sorry, not double check it. We're going to see what the rule is. Here is what this means as a rule. When we're taking the power of a power, let's look at the example first this time. If I have 2 cubed and I raise that to the fourth power, I know that 2 cubed is happening four times. So I'm just going to change that to 2 to the twelfth power. Also, if I have x cubed raised to the fourth power, that's going to be x to the twelfth power. But what we usually do is we represent the base of an exponent with the large letter, large looking lowercase a. It's being raised to the power of m, but then that whole thing is being raised to the power of n, and what that means is we can simply multiply these two parts to get a to the m n. For me, it's clear that this happened three times on the inside, but then I have to quadruple those three times to get 12 total, and 3 times 4 is 12. So that if I had this as 3, and that as 4, then 3 times 4 would be 12. I think this should understand, should be mostly clear now. So let's jump back to the examples as we do more difficult ones. If you were tripped up by me jumping back and forth, pause this and get caught up to where I'm at. But I'll start now. Now here's the situation. Um, this really is 2x squared cubed. And this is in red, so you don't have to write this. Which means it's 2x squared times 2x squared times 2x squared. So I want you to see that because there's multiple things separated by multiplication, this exponent is going to end up attaching to the 2 and that 2. So the 2 that's the number out front, as well as the 2 that is the exponent. So when we rewrite this in the next step, let's place a 2 here. And this would be to the power of 1 times 3, but I don't like to confuse anybody if that isn't helpful. So I'll attach the 3 here. And then I'll deal with the x, 2 times 3. By the way, I'm not writing this out after I've done this one or two times and understand it. So this sets me up for having 2 cubed x to the 6th. And it's better to end up with just a number out front. So here's 8 times x to the power of 6. 
And that is a simplified answer here. X to the fourth squared. Let's make this one an OYO. I'll put the answer up in just a moment. Three, two, one. If you made a mistake on that one or you didn't get it, then picture what I have on the right and write all of these out thoroughly. Also, these are easy to type into Wolfram Alpha by using the caret, then putting parentheses or before or after, and just seeing what it tells you. X to the fourth raised to the power of two, all raised to the power of three. Well, maybe the more confident you get, you're like, well, four times two is eight times three is 24, and you're hypothesizing that it's going to be 24. You could be right. Let's do this in two steps, though. So I see x to the fourth being raised to the power of two, which I know that I just do four times two is eight. Well, I still have not dealt with these parentheses, so I'll rewrite them in different colors so they stand out. And now I have x to the eighth, power raised to the power of 3, which means it's x to the 24. Now, if this looked simple to you, and that was clear on how it worked out, great. If not, then definitely avoid cutting corners, because sometimes we accidentally come up with rules where they don't exist. The only thing that makes this next example challenging is being able to tell what's going on. So to make this stand out a little bit more, I'll color those green, and then I'll color the brackets blue. And that helps me see that the innermost chunk with which I can deal first, the innermost part, so the first thing I'll do is y to the fifth raised to the power of 3, which would give me y to the 15th. I still have my brackets. There's an exponent of 2 attached there and a y out here. I cannot deal with this y yet. Putting it inside the parentheses, inside the brackets, would mean that, you know, it's totally different because this inside part's being squared. So that is not kosher. All right, so I have 15 and 2. 15 times 2 is 30. And then I'm going to write y out front. And now I do need a time symbol. And then finally, this would be to the power of 31. Sweet. Beautiful. That takes care of all of the examples for these types of problems. And we summarized those problems with this power of a power rule. All right, moving on. You feeling brave? Good. Okay, for this one right here, let's actually write this entire thing out. I see these brackets, and it looks like it packages one-half AB squared. So let's see what that means. Well, that'd be one-half AB squared showing up not just once, but three total times. So I will write one-half AB squared times one-half AB squared times one-half AB squared. That means that the value of one-half is actually getting that exponent attached to it. So this is one-half cubed. The a shows up three times, and so a to the power of 1 is also getting that exponent attached to it of 3. Well, then b squared shows up three times, and if this was just the previous rule, we would just do 2 times 3 to get b to the power of 6. And as a final step, I would prefer to not have a constant or a coefficient raised to some exponent. So I'll write 1 eighth a cubed b to the sixth and then box that. I'm going to sidestep for a moment just to talk about that fraction and that's what this red font I have is red ink. 1 half raised to the power of 3 is 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. Well, that's the same as 1 cubed over 2 cubed. So if you were thinking, well, then I don't have to deal with anything but what's in the denominator, I wanted you to see that, well, it became 1 because 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So normally, let's say you had something like 2 thirds to the power of 4. That would be the same as 2 to the 4th and 3 to the 4th. So the exponent would attach to the numerator as well as the denominator. And this will also matter if you're ever dealing with things with variables like this. 
I'm going to clear the ink out for this whole page and scroll back on up so we can look at the second problem. If you're feeling confident, make this an OYO one, and I will explain it at length after you try it yourself. All right, there should be a parentheses here, so if I jump too quickly, I apologize. The other thing, too, is or you could just eliminate this parentheses, whichever one makes you feel better. It's the same thing, so I'll put that there. Okay, so the whole situation here is in parentheses, I will rewrite negative 4, because if I don't, then I might only attach the exponent to that 4. So I'm going to see this coefficient as being negative 4 raised to the power of 2. And then I have b squared raised to the power of 2, which would become b to the 4th. But I'll write this as 2 times 2 to help us see the rule for now. Skip that step when you feel confident. Then I get 16b to the 4th, and I box that. These can be typed into Wolfram Alpha, and they should work out the exact same way as you do them in your notes. So having just done that previous example, let's take a look at one that's the same thing, but a little bit more complicated. Well, 1 half AB squared cubed. Does that look familiar? Negative 4B squared squared. Does that look familiar? Well, I did that on purpose to help see that the brackets and the parentheses are sort of there to just make these problems more complicated. And there are real-world applications of this, so don't let that frustrate you. It's not like they're just trying to be sadistic. So here's 1 half cubed. We're going to do all that same work again. Here's a to the first, getting that 3 attached. Here's b squared, but now I'm going to jump right into 6 because I think we've seen this enough. Although we don't need a time symbol here, I'd like to see a time symbol because it helps me see that the left part has been taken care of and now I'm tracking my work better and dealing with the second part. Now I just see negative 4 times negative 4. I'll write that in parentheses though. You don't have to write in parentheses if you're feeling confident. And then b to the fourth. Now we have a problem like ones we did earlier in notes. I scan from the left to right and I'm looking just for numbers. So I see 1 half cubed I'm going to write that as 1 to the power of 8. I'm sorry, 1 over 8. I keep scanning through left to right. Are there any just regular numbers? Well, I see negative 4 squared, which becomes 16. I scan through. I see no more numbers. So I reset, and I begin left to right, and I see the lowest in the alphabet letter is A, and I only see A cubed. I scan through, and by working my way top-down, sort of, like left to right, it helps me stay organized, and now I move on to B, and I see B to the 6, B to the 4th, which becomes B to the 10th. I'm going to box that. Nope, I'm not. I'm lying. All right. Same as before. I'm scanning left to right. Can I keep simplifying? Well, I see 16 as being twice as large as 8, so I'll cross 16 out, cross 8 out, and I have 2 in the numerator of this, so I will write 2a cubed b to the 10th. And if I'm being real thorough, I should go back, probably not start it over to get to all together again, but go left to right and make sure I didn't leave anything out in coming up with this final answer. Okay, so all of that lets us look at the power of a product as an algebraic rule. So with an example in here, let's say I had 2 times 3 raised to the power of 4. Now I could do 2 times 3 is 6, but I'm just going to stretch this out and be like, well that 4 is going to attach to both the 2 and the 3. So with just numbers there, that's what that might look like. So it is the, there's a product on the inside of a parentheses being raised to a power. So that's what it means by a power of a product. Now that's different from having a lot more going on, where I have like negative 2xy squared cubed. That would mean that negative 2 is going to have to get cubed, and negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, but then I'm going to have x cubed and then y to the 6th. So again, it is the power 
of some things being multiplied together. And I think that braces us for dealing with the symbolic representation of it, where I would have AB, for example, to the power of M becoming A to the M, B to the M. Now at this point you have three separate algebraic rules. I would suggest putting these on vocab cards so you can study them all together if you think they're useful. They're useful. But uh, my best suggestion is learning it to where it makes sense and trying it out with numbers and using Wolfram Alfred to test yourself. And then you don't have to memorize a bunch of rules. This is broken apart so that it kind of sections off a chunk of problems, an odd chunk of problems, and then an even chunk of problems. So I would suggest doing these as two separate assignments where when you finish this one, go back to the other one. That's it for the first section of notes.